Hello, hope you're doing well today. My name is Derek, Senior Cloud Technologist at SUSE. I just want to extend my warm welcome to all of you joining us today. Our topic today is building and deploying IoT solutions with SUSE Container and Application Platform. This is our today's agenda. First, we'll talk about what is IoT platform, what are the key components, and what are the choices available today in the market. And then we will introduce the case study um, for an IoT company. So this IoT company has been in the business for a long time. They are one of the pioneers in doing the IoT solution. We'll look into their current challenges and uh, we'll also look into how SUSE are working with their team together to come up with a proposed solution and we will evaluate um, what are the key benefits from this solution from an infrastructure point of view. And we will then wrap it up with the future plan of this solution and lastly we will host a Q&A session. Without further ado, let's start now. Smart cities, smart home, smart offices are examples of IoT applications which improves the efficient use of our city infrastructure, our home appliances or an environment, or the office building facilities. To save more energy or to be able to share data about the weather or the traffic conditions to make our lives easier and to improve our well-being. The backbone behind all these applications are powered by IoT platform. Let's take a look at what an IoT platform is. Basically, it composed of the technology stack like the hardware or the devices um, and the sensors participating in that IoT platform. And then it will also have the network to be able to facilitate the communication between the devices and the core computing platform. Uh, and the core computing platform will also have all the software infrastructure needed to process the data, collect data, process them, store them, analyze them, and then visualize it, and even suggest the um, recommendation uh, to the operator and the operator can use it as a command and control center to be able to readjust the behavior of the devices in the IoT system in response to the environment changes. So basically, this is the IoT system that we are talking about. Needless to say, security is an important part of the IoT platform to ensure there's only authorized device users to be able to use or operate the environment. The operational side of it is also critical to ensure the system is always available and resilient as much as it can be. So let's take a look when all this technology is stacked together, what will the architecture look like? So this is the IoT architecture that we put all these technologies together. From the bottom, these are the physical devices of the, all the devices and sensors putting up in the environment. And then above it, we have the connectivity, the network to enable the devices to be able to send data to the core system for further analysis, aggregation, and store them, and then process them. So if the environment is too far, the device data need some latency or time to be able to reach out to the core platform. Usually the current design is to move all this computing or data processing capacity into the closer environment of to these devices. So we call this as an edge computing by moving the core platform to the edge. 
So once we analyze all the data, we abstract them, and then we have the application to visualize them to be able to um, alert the operator what are the maybe corrective actions that they want to do to these devices in order to adapt the environment. These are the whole architecture stack that the IoT platform would be exhibiting. Let's take a look at an example of the IoT platform. So in this slide, we show you there are a few devices that keep constantly running. And for example, there's a sensor about the environment brightness. It keeps sending out the brightness as a form of data through the network to the core platform. So the core platform will ingest the constant stream of the brightness of the uh, environment as a form of data, and it will process it, and it will analyze it. So there will be some rule, rules defined by the operator to say, OK, if the uh, brightness of the environment is too dark, then we have to turn on the lights uh, in, in that environment. And so all this will be processed by the core platform, and it will go through the command and console changes to instruct certain uh, device, in this case, is the lighting, to turn on to be able to uh, enlighten the environment when it's too dark automatically. So that's how the IoT platform operates. Having understand how an IoT platform operates, so I've bring up a research report here for you to have a look. Do you know how many IoT platform right now? 200? No. 300? No. OK. So there are about 620 IoT platforms available, which is double uh, the number of IoT platform uh, back in five years ago. So as you can see here, uh, some of them are very popular, like Hyperscaler, Amazon, Microsoft, uh, IBM, SAP, they all, Google, they all have their own IoT platform. And likewise, for some telcos like AT&T, Sprint, um, they, um, they also have their Huawei, they also have their own IoT solution offering as well. Uh, there are some industrial one like uh, General GE, Bosk, Bosk, um, Herman, Ericsson, they, they could be more industry specific. So um, among all this, how can you choose uh, from all this platform for your own solution? Well, of all this 620 IoT platforms, how should I choose? So if you're looking for some general purpose IoT solution to start off, then there are plenty of them in the market. We call them as a horizontal IoT platform. Basically, they have all the well-built IoT stack that you may find available in the public cloud. Uh, to start off to using their IoT platform, basically, you just need to download their software development toolkit and then start programming on their IoT devices and put in the logic that you want to have in your application and all the visuals, device management, um, provisioning, or updating infrastructure, all these are available in this horizontal um, platform. So it enables you to have a quick start on your IoT project right away. Usually, all these IoT platforms, horizontal platform, are commercial basis. Perhaps you may need to pay from some upfront fee or pay per use. It depends on the um, cost structure on each offering. So you, you may need to look into your total cost of ownership and how much you want to spend on this kind of platform. The other one is more for large scale industrial built uh, solution that is called a vertical solution. So the vertical solution may the provider may have a more special ecosystem to build the 
vertical solution. For example, for some certain industry, like for the oil field, to have the IoT to run some preventive maintenance, the, these solutions must be well built, or otherwise, uh, if it doesn't work, then uh, people may fall into the life threatening situation in the oil field um, environment. So, likewise, for connected vehicles, you may need to have some um, vehicle industry, the car player, uh, working together to build a more comprehensive IoT solution to give the best uh, experience, driving experience and safety for the drivers, for example. Um, likewise, for smart cities, you may need to, again, have the um, appropriate partner working together to make the best use of the city infrastructure and to share data with the citizens. So these are the you know, uh, choices that you can have in the IoT platform. For certain projects, maybe you've already built something and then you just want to extend on it. You may want to build, continue to build on your own uh, for various reasons. Maybe you just want to have a more control, uh, customizability on, on the platform. Then, of course, certain company will decide to go down to that road. Now, let's take a look at the IoT company as a case study. So this company has been focusing in energy infrastructure business for many years, over 15 years in the business. They are one of the pioneers in building IoT-based solution before the cloud era. So they have been supplying street lighting systems to the governments in different cities. So worldwide, they so far they have um, built their own IoT system to drive the street, smart street lamp um, and roll out to different cities, including to countries like China, Taiwan, um, Indonesia, and even Europe. So in total, they have been rolled out more than 100,000 um, street lamp posts together. And the total saving in terms of the energy is about 3.5 billion kilowatts annually, which turn into in a total of 20 million US dollars a year, which is quite a significant saving for all these uh, cities combined together. And so they are looking into the next generation, the future smart strip lampposts, just like illustrated in this diagram. It's more than lighting. It also comes with um, surveillance IP camera. It also comes with its own air pollution or water flooding indicator to see the road uh, condition or the micro weather climate uh, in the city. It also comes with um, charger, EV charger uh, for the car or some emergency phone call uh, on the lamppost. Um, you may also find the advertising um, uh, display panel is also there. So it's multifunctional street lamp, which is quite cool, right? Um, so the European government is also considering on deploying it, just like many other uh, cities in Asia, um, to roll out the smart cities uh, campaign. Uh, the main key business driver for this smart strip lamp post adoption is of course about energy saving potential through the LED lamp and also the uh, additional benefits by running all the auxiliary um, devices together to make the city more safer and better for everybody in the city. So as you can see in this slide, the smart strip lamp now no longer just controlling the lighting condition on the road, uh, depending on the brightness of the daytime or uh, the traffic condition, but it also equipped with other functionality like the IP camera to survey the traffic condition so that the traffic signal lighting can also be adjusted accordingly. Um, and at the same time, the weather condition can also be 
uh, collected through all these lampposts to let the urban designer uh, in the city to design better uh, to reduce the air pollutants on the road. So overall, all these are the data points that the city was unable to um, to collect, but now it can be going through with this uh, smart street lamping system. After looking into the future smart street lamp um, design and functionality, let's take a look at this IoT um, company, their current IoT architecture. So it's very business unit or device driven because they are the company um, designing all these devices and each team will de design their own device as a product unit or as a business unit. And so each unit, they don't talk to each other, obviously. That's why you see this kind of diagram. Each device will have their own IoT system. But what's the challenges of this current design? Let's take a look. So as you can see here, this is the key challenges with the current architecture. It is very device centric and each device would have its own IoT stack, uh, which is not scalable and duplicating a lot of resources. And when they introduce a new IoT device into the product, then they don't have any standard and they come up with their own uh, IoT stack with newer technology, making it overall hard uh, to maintain because of the uh, differences in each IoT environment and also making it hard to duplicate the entire system into other geographical regions to expand their business. And that's why the management decided to have a review on the current architecture and trying to improve it by unifying it and modernizing it uh, with a newer technology on the infrastructure side. SUSE and the IoT technical team uh, to sit down together and then we found that we discovered these are the key requirements uh, for their IoT platform. The most critical part is to standardize, unify their IoT platform as a single centralized uh, core platform for multiple devices instead of having a silo one. And they also want to make sure they choose the right cloud or the data center to run this environment. And this environment, because it aggregates all the devices together, uh, so they expect that the network should be good enough with high throughput, low latency in ingesting the device data so that the IoT platform can function properly. And in terms of the application development, they also want the platform itself to be able to support multiple programming language uh, at ease and be able to support newer architecture like microservices. They also expect this platform should be AI enabled to put in some model training for the data collected uh, as part of the pipeline. And they also want to make sure there's a, some modern application practice like DevOps automated deployment are uh, adaptable into this new platform. The most important part is that they want everything to be open source, um, no vendor locked in, and adopt the open standard as much as they can. This is the kind of solution that you will be illustrated once they unify the IoT core platform for multiple devices together. What our team proposed is to run this entire stack uh, with the software infrastructure called SUSE Container and Application Platform. So once it's built, when they add a new product, new device, they just plug that new device into the same core platform and the core platform will simply expand to support one more kind of device so that they can have a unified core IoT platform to operate their multifunctional product operating with multiple devices. Let's take a look at what we're proposing as the infrastructure software that is called SUSE Container and Application Platform. It is a modernized container solution for enterprise. It has two open source components. One is the Kubernetes, which is a container orchestration platform 
to run the containerized application. And the other one is a containerized Cloud Foundry based solution called Suda Cloud Application Platform, which gives the cloud native developer experience for people who run applications on top of the containers. The benefits of running this infrastructure is that it makes the entire underlying infrastructure to be portable. No matter they run their application on prem, on certain data center, or on a particular public cloud, their deployment experience or their hosting experience will remain the same, regardless which cloud provider that they are running. This means they can it also fulfill one of their requirements, that is to make it cloud agnostic. This can help them a lot when they need to choose to uh, deploy their solution into other cities, so they don't need to worry about whether that city has that cloud provider in operation. In terms of the deployment, one of their requirements is to be able to enable the DevOps and automated deployment. And this is where the focus of the SUSE Cloud application platform is. It enables the developers, regardless of which programming language or which programming framework that they are using, they just simply uh, push their code into the platform. The platform will simply containerize them with the hardened build pack from SUSE. And then you will uh, add it to the application, form it as the runtime, and containerize it, and deploy it onto the container platform, uh, orchestrated by the Kubernetes, which will then give them the flexibility to run their application with the built-in self-healing uh, features to make it highly available um, and enable them to do some zero deployment updates if they want to update the software without disturbing the existing workload, things like that. So these are the inherent uh, features that they can enjoy with the SUSE container and application platform by combining the Kubernetes and Cloud Foundry together. So we just mentioned about Cloud Foundry and I've just put up a slide if you want to understand more about why Cloud Foundry is needed. Although you have Kubernetes, here are the uh, key points that I would like to emphasize for. Uh, I think the key differentiation is that we have the build packs to help the uh, developers to manage their own uh, container image base instead of uh, leaving this critical base image uh, at the hands of the developers to handle. Um, and so SUSE can simply to ensure the lowest vulnerability in their running base image from time to time. Having understand what SUSE container and application platform is and what are the key reasons and benefits are uh, as part of this new IoT core platform, let's take a look at this new architecture. So as you can see, all this Business units will then be working together on a single unified IoT platform. Um, and then all their own created application dashboard or business rules, um, all this, their own custom applications will then be uh, deployed quickly and easily uh, from their source code uh, onto the SUSE Cloud application platform. And so this simplifies the uh, deployment, automate them uh, together for all the business units. And the data scientists can also uh, chime into their group to simply uh, work on the AI models um, that they need to deal with to add the intelligence capability into their IoT core platform to increase the usability of their new uh, smart street lamp in this case. For the administration wise, they no longer need to manage multiple different uh, platform. This is the single containerized platform they, that they need to run on. Um, this, this simplify a lot for their uh, administrative work uh, compared to the previous platform that they have. Now, let me go through uh, how in this platform, we solve the problem of building their own real-time intelligence data analytics on their new environment using the open source technologies. 
One of their key requirements is to be able to provide a high throughput, low latency uh, data ingestion system to be able to handle at least 100,000 devices sending messages at the same time. And so we have built a AI-enabled data pipeline using the MQTT broker cluster, uh, Kafka cluster, and then uh, Apache Spark to pre-process pre the data. Um, and then uh, to enable the AI processing, we use Kubeflow or TensorFlow behind the scene uh, to help to do uh, model training uh, using the uh, GPU. And then uh, we also have the data store using Cassandra uh, to store the data. All these components have the Kubernetes native operator, uh, which is not only help the administrator to deploy these infrastructure components onto the Kubernetes natively, these operators can also help them to do the uh, upgrade or uh, expansion of their cluster, uh, maintaining the cluster. So the uh, all this MQTT broker operator or the Kafka operator can help them uh, to simplify the administration work while they have to maintain a scalable um, data pipeline to ingest, stream, process, and analyze their data. So the custom uh, dashboard visualization tools will be deployed onto the SUSE Cloud application platform. And then they can uh, simply connect back to the data store, for example, in the uh, Cassandra to analyze the data and visualize them. Or they can simply take on the model trained uh, and put it into their machine learning uh, program to run some recommendation or suggestion on how their overall smart script lamp system should be able to respond to the change in the environment, for example. So this is the real-time intelligence uh, data pipeline that we use the open source technology to add to it. So at this point, uh, let's take a look at this overall solution benefits. Uh, the unified core IoT platform help them to achieve this scalability so that they can deploy anywhere they like because this is cloud agnostic, uh, the design and it's open source. Um, so they can scale with their business grow, growth. Uh, the entire system is now becoming more agile. Um, they can deploy new applications or new versions of the uh, components at their own will. Um, so it supports microservices, making it more flexible uh, to develop their platform. And the automated deployment helped them a lot um, to speed up the time to market uh, for their solution rollout. Uh, interestingly, it also comes with the A-B testing so that they can uh, try out different features, how it works uh, together now uh, on this new platform, which was not possible to be done uh, in their previous architecture. So while the team right now is building out this unifying core IoT platform, in future, they would add more and more AI uh, or machine learning algorithm into their data processing pipeline. So they want to uh, further enhance the uh, intelligence of their device uh, at the field uh, to create a more creative uh, IoT application. And uh, to support that, they may also want to extend their compute capability from their core platform to the edge. So they may want to do this to increase the responsiveness of their uh, device to the environment. Uh, this can help them to build more creative way of using the um, smart street uh, solution. So this jumps to the end of uh, the design exploration.
of this new IoT core platform using the SUSE container and application platform, which helps them to build in agility and simplify it uh, as a Kubernetes native software infrastructure for running IoT application. So before we uh, conclude this presentation, I would like to point you more other SUSECon sessions that you may be interested in. If you're interested in the uh, machine learning, AI, and the edge computing uh, sessions, these are the uh, selected sessions that I would suggest you to uh, check it out as well. I hope you enjoyed this session and thank you for staying with us. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to drop me an email and then let's uh, discuss further uh, from that point onward. Thank you for attending this session. Until next time, stay safe, healthy, and strong. Bye now. Bye.